Hello my gorgeous makeup loving friends. As you know, or maybe you don't know, I absolutely love indie makeup brands and I love following content creators on the likes of Instagram, YouTube, etc. So when the two worlds collide, I become a very happy bunny. So when I saw that there was a collaboration between Salem Cosmetics and Smink Beruende, who is an incredibly talented makeup artist over on Instagram, I thought to myself, well, I got to get it. And I mean, the outside packaging is just to die for. It's called Forest Heart, and there's such a cool, like, grungy woodland theme to it. And if you've watched my channel before, you will know this sort of colour story is a little bit of me. So this particular video is basically doing some swatches, this particular tutorial, and telling you guys what I think of this palette and whether or not it is worth your money. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then do please keep on watching. I just wanted to talk about the cover art on this. I mean, look at how spectacular that actually is. Like, this alone is like super inspiring to me. So I attempted to use as many of the shades as possible for this. Look, it's very much a trust the process type thing and hopefully once it's all together, lashes, foundation, all of that, it'll start to look a little bit more human. But let's get into it. I'm taking this Be Perfect Stacey Marie 409 and I'm going into the shade Whimsical. For me this was one of the shades that really stood out because I just, I love greens. I have an issue. And I always feel like Smink picks out the sort of colour stories that I have a tendency to gravitate to. Like she'll go for greens and purples and pinks. She'll do something super super grungy. So her aesthetic is very similar to mine. She's just way more talented. So I've actually had this for a while. Everything has just been hectic in my life at the moment. So I haven't had or didn't have a chance to actually sit down and film with it. But I have been side eyeing this for a while, kind of going, oh my God, can't wait to put you on my face. When it did arrive, unfortunately, two of the shades had smashed and I contacted Salem Cosmetics. And can I just say their customer service, spectacular so so good they were like super like courteous and apologetic even though obviously these things actually happen and they were really helpful now thankfully because i have like isopropyl alcohol all that sort of thing in my house because i am a ridiculous makeup lover i was able to repress it myself so like i was able to get the two shades back into the pan but they very kindly gave me store credit and like Here's the thing, it's all great with a brand when everything goes fantastic and like there's no issues and nothing goes wrong. But I think you can really see the true essence of a brand when there is a little bit of an error and then how they actually treat you. And I was super impressed. Now this is a sort of a shade that you do have to build. The pigment doesn't come straight away. So if you are a little bit like nervous of color, um, like this is kind of a good one because it gives you a lot of control over it. You just pack it on and then you can blend it out. But I will say once you get it on, it's pretty darn nice and it does blend really, really well with everything else. Now I'm taking a Morphe M562 and I'm going into the shade Morning Dew. And if I'm 100% honest, I feel like this is the shade in the palette that I'm the most kind of confused by because it's quite like minty pastel-y and everything else is like a little bit grunge so I look at it and it doesn't immediately pop out to me as to what to do with it like it's a different tone to the other greens which are a lot more like warm toned but you can see it is again a very very buildable shade and I'm just popping that up here and kind of blending it in with the, with the shade Whimsical. And I don't know about you, but I am super impressed with how these two blended together. It's so, so nice. And then I'm taking this brush that I got with Artitude Cosmetics. I've really been enjoying that bundle from the Maneater collection. And I'm going into the shade Firefly, which was one of the shades that had shattered, but as I said, it was very, very easy to repress. Now, in my usual fashion, I'm being absolutely abysmally mean. I am not putting down any sort of like glitter primer or anything like that. I wanted to see how this actually performed just by itself. And I feel like it gave just a beautiful little pop of metallic. It's very, very pretty. I'm just 
pop a nut there. I know, so complicated. And then taking a Morphe M562 and just very quickly blending and dispersing that. Because obviously we don't want to have a weird harsh line of where that shimmery metallic shade actually is. And I will be honest, I'm going to go back in and out with the previous two shades just to build it up a little bit, but you guys do not need to see that. Taking another Artitude Cosmetics brush, which by the way, I've been really enjoying this one because it reminds me very much of the Zoeva 225. It's really, really great for that outer corner of the eye. I feel like it's a dupe. Anyways, I am going into the shade Timberland, which just makes me think of A, the boots, and B, Timberlake. Like if Justin Timberlake had like his own theme park, you know, like how Dolly Parton has Dolly Land, his would be Timberland, which nobody wants that. And this, oh, this is my kind of shade of green. It is grungy. It is murky. It's just so, so pretty. So I'm just kind of packing it on and then blending it out. Again, like I said, Smink kind of just chooses the shades that I have a tendency to go for. So when I'm looking at her colour combinations, I'm like, get out of my head, but also stop being so disgustingly talented. Like all of her looks are spectacular. And to boot, she seems to be a very nice person. I'm not saying like I know her personally, like I've had a couple of conversations with her, but she's very, very nice. So it's always really kind of nice when you see that there is an indie brand that is supporting uh, somebody who appears to be very, very genuine. And then I'm taking this Lois Cosmetics brush and I'm just going to take a little bit of Whimsical and Timberland because if you know me, you will know that I am lazy and I'm going to blend between the two just because it's, it's honestly the easiest way of diffusing these things and I will go for any sort of life hacks that make things quicker, easier, and generally better. I have a major amount of admiration for somebody who can like sit there and blend for ages to make it be perfect. I just can't, my brain will not allow me, I get bored. So these little things of like taking the two shadows and blending them on the eye just makes everything easier. I'm just taking this coloured rain brush and I'm going into the shade Whimsical and I'm just kind of putting it up here to kind of blend sort of like a half and half weird sort of an eye look and to be fair you could just leave it at like around this point I mean with all the greens and not bother with the weird do we call it a cut crease what do we call it whatever it is that I did on the other eye you could just leave it like this and it'll be totally fine I mean you can see with this the pigment doesn't go on straight away you do have to like build it up now I quite like that um Depends as to the mood I'm in. Sometimes I like a big whack of pigment straight away, just for whatever. But I feel like this is quite nice in this particular instance. Like I feel like I have a little bit more control as to how this look comes out. And for me, that's quite nice. So obviously because I'm an idiot, I couldn't just leave it there. I was like, let's use as many colors as possible. I took this Lois Cosmetics brush and I went into the shade Tree Frog. And I'm really not taking much of this. I tapped off the excess. And I am just putting it there above the crease because this kind of gives it a more bluey tone almost. And I kind of thought it was a little bit more interesting to do it in this way. Like I feel like that colour adds quite a bit of dimension. And then I'm taking another Artitude Cosmetics brush and I'm going into the shade Evergreen. And I feel like for a 15 pan palette, she's managed to include quite a few colour stories. Like there's some neutrals in there, there's some blues, some greens, pinks, purples, oranges. Like there's a lot in there for like, what is a relatively small palette. Like you have enough there to almost make a little bit of a sunset eye, not a total sunset eye, like you're missing a yellow. But there's a lot in there for a lot of very, very diverse looks. I'm taking this Dew Colour brush and I'm going back into the shade Whimsical. So it's the very first shade that I started off with. And all I want to do is just blend around the edges here in an attempt to soften it up. Then I'm taking this Zoeva 221 and I'm going into the shade Heartwood, which I originally read as Heartweed. And I was like, oh, that sounds like a terrible, terrible disease. And I'm just deepening this out a little bit. So... It's quite funny when I talked about this palette, and I mean, what, it'll be months ago at this point, I 
don't think I even said that I wish there was a black in there because I was like, oh my god, greens, wee! But Smink was like, I am surprised you didn't call me out for the fact that there was no black. And I'm like, yeah, it would have been nice, but I actually think it's not entirely necessary with this. And if you're like me, you probably have a couple of blacks in other palettes that you can just pick up. But obviously for today, I want to use this palette as fully and completely by itself so we get a good idea of how it's all working. So as I kind of said before, you could just leave it at this and have this be your full eye look, which I was super tempted to do because I love green. But I was like, let's not have this be the green channel because if you were left to your own devices, Teresa, you absolutely would let that be the case. So I'm gonna cut out like a circular shape here as best as I can. It's not gonna match, let's be honest. And we'll do the very last bit of this eye look. So I cut out the circles and are they the exact same size? No, this one's definitely bigger than this one, but fuck it, whatever, it's fine. It's makeup, it washes off, it's not a big deal. That's what I keep telling myself. It's not a big deal, Teresa, everything's going to be fine. Yeah, listen to my pep talk. Anyways, I'm taking this Zoeva 237 and I'm going into this purpley blue shade, which is called Amethyst, very correctly named. Now it reminds me a little bit of the bluey purple shade that you see in the Be Perfect Stacey Marie, the Tahiti one. There's like a bluey purple shade in that and this gives me kind of that general vibe. Like it looks similar to it. Now obviously I felt like I had to try the purple because if you know anything about makeup, purples are a B-I-T-C-H, particularly matte ones, to actually formulate and they tend to skip. They tend to be very difficult to blend. So I kind of thought, well, I need to kind of see what the story is with that, even though they've only one purple in the palette, at least like a matte. So I was like, okay, we need to See what the story is with this one. Now I'm taking a Zoeva 238 and I'm going into the shade Mushroom, which kind of matches my nails. I've been getting back into doing my nails, it used to be a special interest of mine, and it seems it's cycled right back in. And I really wanted to see how the pink and the purple interacted. Like I said earlier, you could make a little bit of a sunset, not a full sunset, but kind of enough from this palette. Like you could make it work. But I put too much purple on here and don't have it matching the other side. But oh well, worse things have happened. Now I'm taking a blank canvas E10, I'm taking no product on this, and I just want to blend the purple and the pink. Because as I said, purples are very, very difficult to actually get to blend. And to be fair, I've made it very difficult for myself because it's hard to blend on this part of the eye. So well done, Teresa. You're rubbish at putting together a comprehensive and understandable review. So as you can see there, it doesn't actually blend too badly. I'm quite happy with it. And I'm taking another Zoeva 238. How many of these do I have? Who knows? Would I have more? Absolutely. And I'm going into the shade Toadstool. And I'm really just kind of popping that around here, around here, because I didn't want to put like too much pigment around, because otherwise it looks like really blocky. I'm really not good with like, the makeup up around the brow, like I can't make it look good. It's, mm, anyways, whatever. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. And now another blank canvas E10 and I'm just gonna blend all of them together. Now, full disclosure, this does take a little while to actually do and yes, a good chunk of it gets into my brows, which I do still have to clean, but it'll be fine. Um, I'm trying to do circular motions and I will say, full disclosure, this does take a little bit just to get everything to where I sort of need it. So just keep that in mind. I do think it is like a blendable palette. Does it blend straight away? No, but like very few palettes actually do that. We're at the very end now. I'm taking this Artitude Cosmetics liner brush and I'm going into the shade Wings, which is like a pinky, purpley, bluey, dual chromey shade. It's really pretty. And all I really want to do is just kind of put it in the center of where the purple is and just kind of build it up. As you can see, hopefully, there's a little bit of a bluish reflect to it. I just thought it was super interesting. Like this shade alone is super, super pretty. Like you could just shove that all over the lid. Like, ugh. Few cough, it looks gorgeous. So, so pretty. Taking the same brush again and I'm going into the shade Enchanting. And I'm just popping that one above there. So again, 
The metallics are really nice, super, super pigmented. And I kind of wanted it to be, again, like a little bit of a sunset here. It does look a little bit like that. Taking the same brush again, and I'm going into the shade Dusk. It was one of the shades that arrived shattered, but it was super easy to fix. And it doesn't seem as though that slight break had any impact in terms of its performance, because it still performs pretty well. Now, I've taken very little of it on the brush, because I didn't want to have it overpower because gold have a little bit of a tendency to do that but yeah I really wanted that little almost weird spotlight eye with a sunset very strange and I'm finally taking an Inglot 208 and I am just blending those so dispersing it so that that purpley blue isn't quite as big a thing and just making it a little bit more gentle. So friends, that's it, that's the eyes done. I'm obviously gonna do some liner around that to kind of make it look a little bit nicer, but I will come back once I've put all of my face together to talk about this palette. Can I have a moan about having hooded eyes? Because I was putting on like glitter eyeliner and I was like, yeah, great, this is going well. And then I obviously blinked in a certain way and then just glitter liner went like everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> because of the shape that I had taken. I'm very ambitious and I forget that I have hooded eyes. But anyways, this is what it all looks like together. Like I said, I did use a glitter liner. It's OPV in the shade, I think, No Limit. Anyways, you'll figure it out, it's fine. Let's zoom you in so you can see what this looks like. So this is the eye look all together. It is very green heavy, are you very surprised? If I kind of shift my eyes in a certain way or my face in a certain way, you can kind of see the shifts on the, the purpley, pinky shimmers. But realistically, you'll see them better when I take off my glasses. Don't mind if there are indentations. There probably are. Is it a weird eye shape? Yeah. Yeah, it is. All in all, I feel like this palette performs really, really well. It will come down to your personal preference, okay? So if, for instance, you like a pigment that packs on color, straight away, this isn't going to be the one for you. However, if you like a more buildable formula that you have a little bit more control over, then it's definitely the, the palette for you. I think this is more for people who are a bit more adventurous and happy to take time with playing with their makeup. That's just a, a me thing, but that makes sense with Smink. Like all of her looks are really, really detailed. So it makes sense that she's going with a formula that does allow you to kind of build and take away and build and take away. Like it's a very makeup artist sort of formula, if that makes sense. It probably doesn't, but there you go. The mattes perform really, really well. Like I said, they are buildable. You don't get that punch straight away. So I even feel like if you're very new, you might quite enjoy that because if you're frightened of trying color, you have a lot of kind of control as to how much and when you can stop. With other palettes, you're like putting on that same shade of green and it's like, oh my God, it's everywhere. And then you have to start from scratch. I feel like you're gonna have a little bit less errors with these sort of palettes if you're a bit nervous of makeup. So I kind of appreciate that. I think there's definitely a space for that in the market. In terms of giving it a mark out of 10, I actually think this is really, really nice. It's definitely missing a black. I'm sorry, Smink, I'm sorry. I personally love a black in a palette. That's just a me thing. I would have absolutely loved that. I do feel though that for a 15 pan palette, you are getting an awful lot in there. You're getting your shimmers, you're getting your mattes, you're getting several different color stories. It's very cohesive and yet very, very versatile. So for me, it's definitely a nine out of 10. I think it's actually really, really beautiful. It was one of those palettes that when I saw it, I was like, well, I'm going to have to get it. And then it was like, oh, this is also a palette from Smink. And I was like, oh my God, oh my goodness, like have to get it now. I think it's absolutely fabulous. If you like this color story and you've kind of been on the fence as to whether or not you'll get it, I would recommend it. I think you would enjoy it, maybe, who knows depends upon your preferences, as I said earlier. But for me, this is definitely one I'm very, very happy that I got. But my gorgeous friends, that is it. That's the end of the video. Do please like, comment and subscribe. Turn on that notification bell and do please share because sharing is caring, except of course for STDs, in which case, you know, wrap it up. Don't be gross. But that's it. That's the end of the video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.